G'day Chiefs. A lot of you will have heard me talk about the four stages of transformation. Fix, reset, grow, change the game. These are the four stages that when I'm working with an executive team, we will tend to go through over a few years. But I wanted to give you a bit of a deep dive right now because the game has changed pretty significantly to normal circumstances in the market. And a lot of organizations find themselves in a different part of this journey than they were just a few months ago. So what I want to do is start by telling a bit of a story about why this is so important. And then we're going to talk about what each of these mean. I'm going to a pretty brief sort of look at this, but I want you to get a sense of where you're at, your organization, your team is on this journey. So... Back in 2013, I was asked by an executive team that were leading a mining turnaround in Africa. Um, Brad Gordon was at what was the CEO at the time. He was one of our early guests on the Inner Chief. I think he was episode 25. Anyway, so I went over and joined Brad and this other group of fantastic executives and a few other coaches as well. And um, we, we were part of this turnaround. And when we got there, the, the organization was really, really broken. But let me tell you something. In about, I think it was 2017... I uh, used to land at this airport, and um, which was inside the, the the fences of one of the mines. And for quite a few years, I'd been met by a number of the different people there, and one guy in particular. And when I first got there, you know, in 2013, you wouldn't say he was that welcoming. He was used to people turning up from all over the world to tell them how to run their business and how to run their mine. And anyway, I got it. But when after several years, it must have been about 2016, 2017, I remember getting off the plane and walking in and seeing him and greeting him, and it was a really warm greeting. And he said to me, Kaka Yango Mambo Vibi. And in Swahili, that means, my brother, how are you, man? Like, it was a really cool way of saying, how are you? And I went, we've done it. Like, the, this executive team and, and all the supporters that they've got, they did it. They turn it around. I can tell you, they started down here at Fix and they got all the way to grow in about three years. When we got there, corruption was rife. People were stealing $25,000 scoops off, the, off the, the main part of the mine. There was rife corruption throughout the business. There was 18 fatalities a year at one mine alone because, this, because a lot of the workers and the people that were coming in from outside breaking security were killing each other. Like we were losing money, like the money that was going out the door here was crazy, right? The share price was way down. Like I think it was uh, around about, um, no, I think about 50 pence at the time, right? By the time we got up to here, it was trading at nearly four pound. Like things totally turned around. So what was really important though, over this journey of building trust, engaging the community, developing people, promoting people, the local nationals and really going with purpose was these four stages. Now, the, we didn't know these stages before and during this process. This is something that in my deep reviews, I uncovered and went, I think this is how it works. And since then, I've gone back and I've worked with executives that were there and I've spoken to a whole bunch of chiefs since and they all agree that this is sort of at least pretty damn close to the way that it works. So let me talk you through it. And this is what happened in Africa. When we got there, totally broken business. Can you imagine uh, profits? No profit. We're losing money hand over fist. Toxic culture, high turnover, commercials, all at sea, right? When we get to reset, eventually what you get is more of a stabilization of losses. So you almost get like a sawtooth kind of result. Some, one, some months you win, some months you lose. While you've still got a sort of mostly or even a 50-50 toxic culture, you're starting to turn the ship. You've actually gotten rid of a whole bunch of really bad people in the business that were dragging everybody else down with them that had no vision for the future. So in this reset piece, now is when you set the big grand vision of the future, right? And that's exactly what Brad and the executive team at Acacia did. They created a phenomenal turnaround right here. And this is when they grabbed... The heart and the soul of everyone in the organization said, we are going to create the best mining company in Africa. We're going to change the way mining is done in Africa and do it with the people as a unit. So reset tends to take between 18 months to three years, depending on the size of the organization. 
fix normally about six months eventually you get to grow now you've got really nice stable growth and this is when the case became a bit of a market darling and the share price went right up along with the gold price at good times and so things just worked out for them in the end right they got all the way to this growth phase and things are going super well now unfortunately the story didn't end magnificently because there was a whole bunch of government level uh, changes and corruption and you know what i'm not going to go there but the government destroyed the organization, not the executive team. Here's the lesson, right? I remember walking around one of the mine sites one day <clears throat> with Brad, and, and we're walking around each of the different parts of the business, the maintenance guys in the supply uh, warehouse, and we're walking around going, and Brad sort of was sharing with me, you know, we keep saying what we need to do, but and we're asking people to go and do it, but they're not doing it. And it dawned on us that what was actually going on is we were leading almost like we're already up here and reset or grow. Okay, now this is really, really important. At this point, the business is completely broken. Almost nobody knows what they're doing in the business. That's really important to understand. If somebody doesn't know what to do when the business is broken, they don't know how to improve performance, they don't know how to engage their team, they're just all at sea. And they will do all sorts of crazy things and they won't even follow what you ask them to do. So at this point, you get this almost warlike kind of leadership style. It's a bit of command and control kind of. We need to get the, the leadership team to dive down into the business and really do the heavy lifting. And it's way more directive the leadership style than it is up here in Grow where it's way more engaging and empowering. Down here, if you just give people the full empowerment, they'll fail and it won't be nice for them and it won't be great for the business. Just remembering it's because they don't know what to do and so many things are broken, it's actually quite difficult to work out what the moves are. So here, we get into more of a command and control kind of response. We do whatever we can to maybe, maybe you've got to restructure debt, maybe you've got to fix a few systems, maybe you've got to change a number of people, you've got to right size the business. This is what's going on for an enormous number of businesses right now, is they have all of a sudden discovered for no fault of their own that they're in a really, really difficult place. The difference is, when I teach this normally, most organizations that are in fix deserve to be there. They've done something wrong, right? They've um, got their systems wrong, their leadership wrong, their financials wrong, something has gone wrong and they deserve to be here. Now it's a really complex fix, okay? A lot of organizations right now find themselves down in fix simply because of market factors, right? The economy has tanked, industries have closed, they find themselves here. So their systems aren't too bad. Their people are probably fantastic. They've probably got a great culture, okay? They might even have a great vision. But what's got to happen now is this short-term focus of sort of 30-day cycles of what we call 30-day sprints to fix the business. And that might be, as I said, creating new revenue, new products, changing your systems, changing key people, make stuff happen. Here, you're in save mode, all out. You can redeploy assets from one place to another, right? You can form partnerships with your enemy. In World War II, this is what I'm talking about when I say wartime kind of leadership, in World War II, they formed an alliance with the, the allies in Russia, right? Traditional enemies, all of a sudden, they're allies. So you can do anything here. Anything goes to save the business, okay? Partnerships, new products, new revenue streams, new systems, anything you need to do. Take someone who works over here and say, we need you over here right now because we've got to save the business. So that's fix. When things stabilize at some point. By the way, just a final point on that is right now, if you're in fix and you're in a really bad mode, that's all you need to focus on. You don't need to worry about the next step. Just get through this particular part. When you get to reset and the business has actually found itself in a, um, just everything's stabilized a bit. You know, like you're not gonna go out the back door anymore, right? It's still a bit bumpy, but you know, you've stopped the bleeding. Sinking ship, not sinking anymore, right? You're not <laughs> at sail under full head, a full head of steam going somewhere, but at least you're not sinking, right? What we do now is, now we decide where we're gonna go. So the big kickoff here for me is when you've stemmed the bleeding and the ship is no longer sinking, then you say to yourself, okay, what's the new vision? 
right? And this is what Brad and the executive team at Acacia did. They brought people from all over the business together, this fantastic workshop that ran for a few days, and they created a compelling vision and purpose for the business and started to do the strategic planning of the future of the business. That's what launches this. That will tell you what you need to do from a commercial sense, an operational sense, from a people sense, and from a strategy sense. In here, you've got 18 months to two, maybe three years to create all the right foundations for a fantastic business. Great commercials, great systems and processes that drive outcomes, great people and fantastic culture and a good strategy which is just steeped in great service and product for the market. That's reset, okay? At the beginning, the final point I'll say is when you start this, you need to have the right executive team in place. So people come to me and say, hey Greg, can we go away and do that vision workshop? I'll say, have you got the team in place first? As Jim Collins, who wrote Good to Great said, get the right people on the bus first. Get the right people on the bus, then you do vision and strategy because you want all those people involved in the two to three year turnaround that gets you to grow. If you do all the right things here, you go to grow and all of a sudden, you've got really good solid market level returns, okay? If the industry benchmark is 10% margin, you're hitting 10% and going super well, right? At this point, you're gonna find there'll be some natural attrition. Some of the people that took you on this journey just will have run out of steam. This is hard going, really, really hard leadership and only a certain quality of executive I've met is really drawn to it, okay? It's people that just love a challenge, love rolling the sleeves up, you know, they're, they're, they're just a really different kind of breed and I really love working with organizations going through this particular part of the journey. When you get to here, what you'll have find is when you get here, you need a slightly new set of team again. The process re re begins. Form the team, make sure you've got all the right people, some new blood, some new ideas, attract the best people in the market you possibly can. Update the vision and the strategy. Go big. Now you've got an opportunity because you really want to get to a position where you're up here in change the game, which is where you're in complete market dominance. All right? As I said, in the, in the name of this episode is Sinking Ship to marking market dominance, that's what I'm saying. This sort of five to 10 year sort of journey, which takes you through these stages. So once again, you form the team, once again, you set the strategy. Now you're investing way more in technology and innovation and getting the very best people on your team. Far more empowered kind of leadership. You're coaching and developing your people. It's really great. The, the chances of you all of a sudden tanking at this point are much, much lower. So you can take risk, you can really have a crack at making your business incredibly great. We had Kevin Gaskell on, he was episode 173. He was managing director of uh, Porsche, BMW and Lamborghini. So we should listen to him. And what he does is when he takes an organization and he wants to work out what to do next for them, he will get to this point somewhere here and they'll all tell him they want to grow by 3%. And he'll just look at them with like almost a cross-eyed, are you crazy? At this point, you don't plan to grow three, you plan to grow 30, all right? You wanna grow 30% year on, year on, year on, year on. And Kevin's even gonna process that aims for 300% growth. And that just totally changes the way you think. If we have to make a plan that grow, makes you grow 30% or 300%, that plan is completely different. Sometimes what a lot of organizations will find is that in order to go from here to here, you've almost, got to, you've almost got to burn the house down. You've got to forget everything you've ever known to be true, and you've got to look at it with a really clear bank blank canvas and ask yourself, what could we do that would make us great? This is all about legacy and changing the world for a better place and, and making your people fantastic and serving your suppliers and making the customers feel valued and the community around you. And the more you go along this, the more that purpose will drive innovation and, and a fantastic culture that just makes it easier and easier and easier. In those environments, when you've got a fully engaged workforce and you ask them, how do we grow 30 or 300? They'll probably tell you. They might already know. So we go through grow, right? And then you get to this place here. This is full market darling. This is a unicorn kind of organization that is just getting way above market rates. Really, really heavy investment in research and development and technology, are you Google, Apple, who spend the most on R&D than anyone in the entire world. I think Facebook is in that category too. 
um, huge development in people and leadership and culture and cr trying to create this focus on complete excellence in every single thing you do. Right, this is really playing top level, premiership level football. Right, it's the best of the best of the best in the room doing amazing things. Now, each of these has their own challenges from sinking ship to market dominance. What I want to impress on you is the leadership style on each of them is different. It's different. The process is sort of the same. You form the right executive team, you form the guiding coalition, you set a vision and a strategy, you create an operating rhythm that drives that. You build the culture in the team and down through the business. You unleash the power of your middle management, right? Never forget that. That's something I'm super passionate about. And what you do as you go through each of these is you progressively improve the business, progressively get closer and closer to your legacy, to your purpose, and complete market dominance. Okay, Chiefs, that is the four stages of transformation that uh, we teach at Chief Maker. I hope it helps you in where you are right now and finding out what you should do next as an executive to drive some big change in your business. Any questions, always fire them through to me to greg at chiefmaker.com.au. All right, Chief, till next time, as always, remember to stay epic.